All right, I understand the impatience. Originally, I was going to wait with the review of this weapon until I've done some test cutting with it. However, we'll be stuck in this apartment for another five or six months, and chances are I won't be able to get any testing with it done because I don't really have a great location right now for doing it. So I'm just going to give you my impression of it so far instead of making you wait until then. So this is the winner of a weapon design contest in 2020. And this is based on a Kopesh-like weapon from the Sly Cooper series. This was made by bladesmith Quinn Waterfield. And uh, the tiebreaker here basically was that this was one of the ones that he was particularly interested in making. And uh, that helped with the decision because there were so many really good designs. It was hard to pick a first place winner. And uh, yeah, so this is what we've got. Very interesting design right here. So you've got the Kopesh-like blade here. There's a hook at the end. And in the game, Sly Cooper uses that to hook into objects and swing on this. Somebody actually asked if that would work with this, if it's sturdy enough. This gets relatively thin. So uh, with my current weight, that <laughs> might put some strain on it. But in general, I think you could. It's got this nice brass bolster here to reinforce it and prevent the tang from breaking out of the wooden haft. This part here is ground too, sharpened. I mean, not really sharp, but it's, um, it's tapered. So that is a bit of a point as well. So you could catch an opponent's blade right here. And of course, up there too. And uh, the idea here in, this, in the design was that this can be used to hook an opponent's neck. Now, I think with the angle that it's at, if you tried that, chances are you would drive this into the neck or the trapezius muscle rather than hook around the neck. There simply isn't enough space really. So with a custom weapon like this, there are several factors that go into the review, of course. One is how good the design is to begin with. The other is how well it's executed. And then of course, how good is my interpretation? So I find the handling really interesting on this. So it's got a mace head right here that's designed for use as a bludgeon, of course. So uh, in the drawing, in the design drawing, it's shown gripped like this, you know, just one hand down here, the other gripping the blade for more reach, which in and of itself is good, but I'm gonna tell you right now, um, I'm a nope out. <laughs> I'm not going to grip this <laughs> and swing it around, uh, not just because the blade is very sharp, but also because it's curved and pretty wide. There's, you know, gripping a, a long sword, particularly with gloves for the infamous murder stroke is one thing, but gripping a fairly wide, fairly thin curved blade like this, I, I just don't think you can do that. I think it would have to be used like this. So here we have a problem that's very common in double-ended or double-bitted, double-bladed fantasy weapons. Um, this can, can kind of interfere, it can get a little bit in the way. So if I want to swing this, I have to constantly be aware of the fact that this is threatening me at the same time. You wanna know how I got these scars? The one time I decided to be a dumbass and do some twirling for fun is the one time I cut myself with a blade, appropriately. Well, at least it proves my point. And it's worse in this case because of this hook. If I'm not careful and I move this around, I may actually jab this into my side and, and rake myself with it, particularly the leg. If this ends up low and I don't notice and I pull it forward like this, I could possibly sever my own hamstring. You can definitely swing it in ways to minimize that problem. Like for example, any kind of rising strike like this, is generally going to keep this away from me, you know, unless I overcommit and then it gets dangerously close to the face. But you know, horizontal swing, again, this depends on the arm extension. If I keep it relatively 
retracted and only go up to here, I'm fine. But if I want to use more reach, so this gets really close to my elbow. I don't particularly enjoy that. However, that's of course not the only way to use the mace part. You could also strike with it like this. And that's where it comes in really handy. This of course has much more heft because it has all that extra weight. It's got metal at the end. So if I strike with this, it's going to be way more effective than just with a piece of wood. You could even thrust with it you know, to the face, for example. This would not be fun. There's one interesting way in which this could come in handy, considering that you have, just like with an ax, you have this angle here, that part you can hook with. So let's say you're fighting somebody with another, with an ax or another pole arm, things like that. You could hook, pull down, and now you can come back up with the mace part. So hook the weapon, pull it down, boom, strike. This could also be used in a feint. Let's say you come down for a cut, and as the opponent prepares to parry that, instead of following through, you just suddenly strike with the mace part. So how about the cutting mechanics? This is quite different from a sword or pole arm. A pole arm, of course, would have most of its mass up here, so the point of balance would be pretty high up, which means it delivers powerful strikes. This, the balance on this is much, much lower. This is in fact closer to a sword than a pole arm, as you can see right here. So that is quite a bit different, which means that it really handles more like a sword. It has more the agility of a sword. If this wasn't there, it would be a more powerful cutter, but with it being there, it's much more maneuverable. So you could do things like disengage thrust, although this is not really a thrusting blade, not only because the profile widens pretty quickly beyond the point, but also because once this enters, there's pretty much no way to retrieve this. Now, if you imagine if this hooks behind a rib, for example, that thing is stuck. There's no way you can get that back out unless you literally pull the entire rib out, which is gruesome and effective, I suppose. But either way, I would definitely not say this is a thrusting blade at all. So it's all about the cut. Now, there's different ways to hold it, of course. If I hold it like this, this is not a particularly powerful cut. If you grip it down here, that is a much stronger cut. It's not as fast, but you can hit way harder. And of course you have significantly more reach. So at first I really wasn't sure what I think about this counterweight, but I can see it working. So basically you can choose whether you want to prioritize cutting power or speed and agility. So that works quite well in that sense. The only difficulty would be carrying this. So basically if you, if you carry like a walking stick of sorts, kind of, that could be done potentially. You could just, you know, the way they carried large swords and pole arms, basically just rest it on the shoulder or, you know, if you have a vehicle or a horse or something in whatever fantasy setting, then just put it on there. Essentially, you can't really, I mean, you could potentially carry it on your side like this, like a sword, basically. You would have to be very careful with this hook, maybe if you have a specialty sheath for this, or, or just a, an additional piece that slips over that point to make sure you don't annihilate ankles <laughs> unintentionally, things like that. That could potentially work. Um, you definitely cannot carry it like this. That's just, it's in the way and the, the balance is weird because now you have this, this weight dangling 
by your ankles. I know it's fantasy, so back carry. I suppose if you had like some a setup with, I don't know, a magnet or some quick release straps or something like that that allows you to just unclick it, <laughs> unsnap it. That sounds very professional, doesn't it? That allows you to quickly remove the attachment points and then just pull it off your back because um, there's no way you could just draw this straight up unless you have, again, like a specialty scabbard setup that allows you to basically remove it like this, you know, pull it out the side, stuff like that. Might work reasonably well strapped to the side of a backpack the way I showed in this video here, you know, just like a sword, you could also strap this to the side of the backpack and then just remove the backpack if you need to. Because I mean, if you had to suddenly use this for fighting, you wouldn't really want the backpack on there anyway. I could certainly imagine this being a climbing aid. In fact, in one of the old Norse sagas is even mentioned that somebody uses a two-handed ax to hook over top of palisades and climb up that way. You could either use this part to hook in and pull yourself up or the other side. Now this will be, in that case, it would be better if this was more rounded and not quite as drawn out perhaps. But uh, either way, I mean, you could definitely use it for different purposes. Like this could hook into different objects and materials compared to that. So that could add versatility. So keep in mind, this is still speculation because I haven't done any cutting with it. There might be surprises. You know, sometimes there's something about a design that throws off the edge alignment or something. I wouldn't really expect that in this case because uh, Quinn shaped the haft really well. So you can really feel and control the edge alignment quite well. It is a little different to have this weight here. So it definitely feels different than, than just about anything else I've, I've used so far. But I don't really foresee any particular problems with that. That's all I've got for now. Again, sorry that I haven't been able to do any actual tests with it so far, but um, hope you found it still interesting, entertaining, etc. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.